Hello everyone, Brian here. Along the retaining wall, I've been slowly working on clearing it back. And this was done, started last year. Over the last few days, I cleared back most of the space back there. And we still have this little patch to work on. Um, been doing it a little bit at a time just to, to make sure I don't get mentally exhausted and do something not so safe and hurt myself. Today we'll be doing something real fun, transplanting tomatoes. It's been cold the last couple of days and I've taken the plant starts into the garage to keep them warm. And speaking of staying warm, I got my beanie on to, to keep me warm this morning. 55 degrees here in Southern California. And we'll be transplanting some tomatoes. I normally like to transplant them before the heat of the day kicks in and it gives your transplant plants less of a uh, stress shock. I've never transplanted them at 55 degrees, usually around 70, so hopefully too cold is not a bad thing. So um, we are going to put them in the planter here and I've marked off the planter this year to help with some of the spacing. This is a 8 foot beam and I've scored marks at one foot intervals and we'll be planting our tomatoes here. The uh, freckles romaine lettuce, we're going to have to harvest it to give our tomatoes space. I, I haven't been eating too much of it. I mostly enjoy looking at this beautiful variegated plant. If anything, I will pull off a couple of leaves from the sides and have it for salad or in a soup to get my leafy uh, greens requirement. In this planter we have space for seven varieties and we have five that are ready to go. I thought about putting two Cherokee purples here but we still have black rim and um, beef steak and mortgage lifter tomatoes that we're waiting on so We'll just do one variety each. These are the Cherokee Purple. This is the Brandywine. This is a Black Prince. And this is Aunt Ruby's uh, German Green. It's always a challenge getting these plants out of these um, containers, these types of starter pots. So going to, since this one is already degrading, I'm going to tear them out and not use them again. Here's our tomato plant and some tomato planting basics. We want to pretty much get this plant covered up with dirt as much as possible because the roots will start coming out of the stem here, the main stem here, and it's been generally a good idea to plant as much of the stem as possible into the ground. In the wild, I think what tomatoes do is they lean over and then they grow um, roots from the stem, so we want to try to mimic that. So this year what I'm going to do differently is I'm going to dig a trench and plant them lower than normal and as the plant grows taller we can backfill our trench and then we can then that way have the uh, tomato deeper in the soil. The other alternative is to if you don't do that is to um, let the as the plant grows and gets taller above the soil line you can pretty much uh, kind of lean it over and then cover the plant with um, soil. So if you already transplanted your tomatoes, that's your, that's your other option later on is to, as the plant grows taller, um, you just bend it over a little bit and then cover this part of it with soil. In our trench, I'm going to put some of this fertilizer in here. This is 11 and a half pounds of fertilizer. I normally use only one bag per growing season. Maybe we'll up it to two this year since we're growing a lot more, but 
I try to avoid using fertilizer uh, only because uh, one main reason is costs and there are other reasons. Maybe we'll talk about it in a fertilizer video one day. But um, so this is what I like to do. Just throw some of this in here. This fertilizer has bone meal and other calcium related stuff. We've got our tomato plant up against this line here and we'll backfill our hole a little bit. I like to plant it as deep as possible and all the way up to where the tomato plant starts branching out. Hopefully it doesn't get mowed down by pests. I've been having terrible luck this year. So knock on some wood. They usually don't attack our tomatoes because I, I really want to show you guys how these tomato plants turn out. And it'd be a shame if they got mowed down by something. All right, oh, almost forgot. Where's my plant tag? Here's my plant tag. I made it a purpose this year to label everything because I always kid myself and tell myself that I will, I will remember what I plant or sow and I always forget. So I made it a hard fast rule this year to tag everything, no matter what, even if I think I'm gonna remember. All right, I'm gonna continue planting our tomatoes and um, do it really quickly. So here we have our heirloom tomatoes planted. We have Cherokee Purple, Brandywine, Aunt Ruby's German Green, and a Black Prince. So on this planter we have room for one, two, three more uh, tomatoes and we'll look at them, the seedlings in a bit. But first, as far as the space is concerned, most of the sun comes this way and that gets afternoon shade. Um, so I like to plant some of the uh, ones that I haven't grown in the past in the better spot, like these uh, Cherokee Purple. I got purple, one of these late fall, but I like to get a really good robust one for the first time. And then uh, Brandywine, I hope to get uh, a Brandywine and uh, German Green. And then Black Prince, we did really well in the past. It's always been a good performer tomato here in Southern California. The uh, roots itself, if, if we could go by the roots, the Black Prince has a really raw, a strong root system right now. Coming in second in terms of root system uh, development are the uh, German greens. And then the brandy wines and the Cherokee purple, they were kind of okay. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that and see how they do. If we can go by the robustness of roots it's going to be a indi good indicator that we're going to get a lot of tomatoes. Once again, best to transplant during the morning hours or very late afternoon after the threat of heat stress. Plant tomatoes with a mild fertilizer like a 463 fertilizer and plant them deep so that they can have more exposure to soil and thus more roots being developed. Stronger roots means healthier plants that are more disease resistant and more productive. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Let's go get our seedlings from the garage. They've been protected from our 50 degree low last night and the garage is around 60 degrees so that 10 degrees could help. This I have here to keep the sea tray elevated so that the slugs can't get them. One of the things about our Southern California climate is that it can be tricksy sometimes. It'll be nice and warm during the day and then at night the temperatures can drop really low. And it's only been in the last couple of growing seasons that I've taken the effort to take in seedlings during the night. 
any temperature below 60 will stunt the germination or the growth of plants. So by taking them in, we're hoping that it will help the plant stay nice and vigorous. If you're curious about the other tomatoes that we didn't transplant, they're going to be transplanted into a larger container and many of them will find new homes. And then our seedlings update. Black Prince tomatoes have popped out and those are going to new homes. Um, here's our peppers. Hemo, Basila, Bahio, Jalapeno. Looks like only one came out. These are older seeds, so I should have really over sowed. Anaheim, another one's coming out. Black Pearl, we have two. We have to just divide those out. We're still waiting on the other cells and then don't see anything at the moment. Romas, these were sowed 312. Uh, Shishido sowed 312. One of them popped out, but looks like the rain splashed it out of its place. California Wonder, nothing yet. Uh, Mang Anji, nothing yet. No Siso yet. And more Italian Romas. The black crim seeds that Letty sent, us, sent to us, they, they're really viable. They're the quickest to germinate so far. I think they germinated in five days. And these are seeds from 2015. Watchman, the Watchman, Hollyhock. Peach, or yeah, peach, passion, sunflowers. Um, always good to thin them at the last moment because you never know if a cutworm finds its way or a slug finds its way in here. For instance, if I had thinned out one of these sunflowers, we would have lost this entire planter because the slug found its way. And I always forget to move them away from the slugs in the evening. So I know, I know, I'm supposed to use the cinder block and plywood. Um, pak choy, more pak choy. This was sowed on March 18th. And um, what are these? Oh, these are giant spinach that were sowed 319. Uh, it's, I think it's French. Monstro de Viroflé. And we have, these are more shishitos from the 12th. On the 18th and 19th, I, I sowed a bunch of uh, squashes, cucumbers, and more tomatoes. So just real quick, a couple or four black beauties. Two for myself, two for my mom. With one plant, you will get more than you can eat. Two ensures better pollination. Uh, 318, cool, our telegraph cucumbers are starting to pop out. I don't know if you can see that. Two tele, four telegraphs. Um, two for myself and two to give away. We have some early prolific yellow squashes. So two plants. Mortgage lifters, um, one mortgage lifter, one beef steak, two muncher cucumbers, and two sweet market more cucumbers. And lastly, some fushimi togarashi peppers and ping tongue eggplants. And if you like flowers, let me show you some flowers. This is a snapdragon, it's, uh, the variety is night and day. It's a perennial here in California and they're starting to bloom. And I'll take you and show you the Mr. Lincoln rose that's it going into bloom. It's back that way. It's starting to look like a beauty in the beast rose right now. But here it is. Look at that color. The camera's just not picking up the deep, rich red here. And there's a gradient from the tip of the rose to the inside. Once it goes into full bloom, it will be the size of my hand. <laughs>